Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We got a bevy of news stories for you today. Timestamps down um, in the description. Uh, and including one certain story where we finally get to put to bed one of the most infamous Nintendo insiders over the last year. Yes, we get to bid adieu in quite a hilarious fashion. That being said, uh, we are giving away $100 cash money to new subscribers in the month of January, all the way through January 27th. So if you are not subscribed to the channel and want a chance to win $100 in cash money, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, just subscribe in general if you enjoy this video and enjoy the things we do. Uh, we also are going to have a thousand like goal again on this video. Uh, if we hit a thousand likes in the first 24 hours, somebody down in the comments will win a $50 eShop gift card. Also, to get all of our giveaways out of the way, we also are giving away three copies of Pokemon Legends. Arceus uh, to enter to win that you head down to the viral sweep link down in the description of the pin comment I know it's a lot of stuff to get through <sighs> let's just get into the news because oh boy do we got a lot first one that we actually talk about is Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity so we have first some information from an interview that details some of the most difficult parts of making this game and you're going to be quite surprised at what it is so let's get to those quotes so Mashashita said initially the plan was to go with something a little different but it ultimately ended up being quite a faithful reproduction the atmosphere of breath of the wild's world really made its way onto the battlefield with that said there were also parts we inevitably had to change as well it really gives us the impression that even the grass grows the same way Ooh, Oshi says yeah that grass took ages all of them laugh Furusawa says, it was a real pain, wasn't it? Uhoshi says, it took about half of development time to finish touching up the grass in the game. We really struggled to recreate the atmosphere of Hyrule Field. Furusawa chimes in and says, we asked the Zelda team at Nintendo how they made the grass in Breath of the Wild. And even though they shared everything down to the finer details of their methods, there was still uncertainty about whether we could reproduce it. The game has a lot of grass, so we also had to consider if there were other methods available to us. Uoshi says, we experimented with a bunch of different options to make the grass stand out as one of the strong points of the game. Matashida said, the whole company got dragged into the grass mess, didn't they? Uoshi said, many, how many hundreds of people was it? Then he laughs. Uh, Mushida says, it's no exaggeration to say we were in talks with the development staff, CG departments, and background and technical support the whole time. So obviously uh, there we're just talking about how one of the biggest most important parts of Age of Calamity was obviously being able to replicate the grass from the original Breath of the Wild. They were able to obviously pull that off but it's very curious to see that how difficult that was. Of note you know like the grass and the physics of that grass and the interaction with the character that's been possible for a decade plus. Uh, it's not really new but a lot of games to this day still don't do it. It's actually one of my big criticisms of the upcoming um, Horizon Forbidden West and it was actually um, you know of the Horizon um, Zero Dawn back on PlayStation 4 was you clip through the grass like it's not even there um, and ever since Breath of the Wild it just feels like it's immersion breaking to me but I know it doesn't bother everyone you guys let me know if you really enjoy that Breath of the Wild style physics and grass and all of that um, but even bigger news for this some real news about this uh, is that it has it they announced publicly on Twitter that they have shipped four million copies of Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity by the way that's like two and a half million more than any other uh, you know Musou game warrior game has ever done so yeah that's doing really really well that's more units by the way than like Majora's Mask sold so to put this in perspective this is selling at the level of prior Zelda games even outselling some prior Zelda games so yeah Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity pretty big hit for Team Ninja over there now this next story is something that might impact our channel but if not ours, it'll impact others. And that is because Capcom is finally doing something really neat to make things easier. They have created what's called a creator program. Now, this Capcom creator program is intended to pay, basically take people like me and other content creators out there, social media influencers, and have them team up with Capcom to get early copies of games, of course, to do things like review coverage, preview coverage, live streams, all of that. Also, potential paid opportunities in there as well. This is essentially like Nintendo's insider program, except for Capcom. And yes, you were obviously able to get review copies of games from Capcom and stuff in the past, but you had to go through a PR person. It wasn't an official program. Um, and yeah, you still have to apply for it. Now, I have obviously applied for this program. Um, I'm very interested in Capcom games on Nintendo Switch in particular. Uh, obviously, we have the Monster Hunter series. There's supposedly a Resident Evil game coming, and if that's the case, I would love to partner with Capcom to do pre-release coverage of that. Honestly, I think this is just more 
big news for me than you guys, except you guys are gonna reap the benefits because a lot more content creators in 2022 are gonna have access to be able to do coverage of Capcom games before launch. Um, it also, also further disconnects the need for you to go to other big websites for Capcom coverage because you'll be able to get it at content creators, hopefully like myself. Again, I've already applied for this program. There's a link as well if you're a content creator as well and you would like to apply for this program too down in the description because hey, um, who wouldn't want to at least take a shot and see what's happening? Plus, there's potential paid opportunities in there. I'm not so sure that we'll qualify for that, but I'm okay with just doing preview coverage of games I'm actually interested in from Capcom for Nintendo Switch. So. We'll see how that shakes out, but hey, you know what? It was worth a shot, and uh, yeah, you might see some cool Capcom content at our channel at some point in the future. This story is more of um, more important to our channel than necessarily important to gaming, although um, I do find this hilarious. So you guys probably know over the last year, we've been covering a new supposed Nintendo insider in Samus Hunter on Twitter. We've actually reported stuff from her as recently as this past Monday, and she has gotten a number of things right, also a number of swings and misses, and there's been a lot of insiders over the, you know, the past six months that have really been calling her out, claiming she's just stealing information from others, and in my private conversations I've had with her, it's become quite clear that I think I know where she gets her information from, but also don't understand how based on where she gets her information from she's able to say some of the things she says i am of firm belief that samus hunter if they do have any sort of connections it's to someone who works on nintendo of europe's twitter account or somebody else she's stealing information from that knows someone who works on nintendo of europe's twitter account because all of the things she gets right are things announced on that twitter account everything else she seems to get wrong so yeah take that for what you will We've obviously said to be skeptical of Samus Hunter, especially after she swung and missed big on Zelda 35th anniversary stuff at the Game Awards. So I've been obviously paying a lot of more attention to these insiders and keeping track of their track records and whatnot. And But something happened today that's, to me, very rare with these insiders, and I'm really, really glad. So tonight we have special guest Zeon coming on to our Nintendo Prime podcast. And this matters because he works at Nintendo Life, but he doesn't work alone. He works in their video department along with John Cartwright and Alex. You guys know Alex? Hi, everyone. You know, what? I mean, we're not going to get into the whole Alex from Nintendo Life thing. But here's the thing. What I really like about what happened here is John Cartwright basically called Samus Hunter a liar. Let's get into the full context of this Twitter conversation because, um, yeah, let's just say... Samus Hunter is fake. Confirmed. 100%. Let's get into it. So Samus Hunter uh, tweeted out yesterday, I see several articles going around about lineups for Nintendo this year. There are games I don't see mentioned or titles that will be coming out later. By now, it's confirmed from news outlets that there will be Legends previews this week. She's, she's claiming that news outlets are saying the previews are dropping this week. Of note, that was already debunkable because literally no news outlet actually said previews were coming um, this week, but there's that. Um, and I mentioned that this was going to happen just yesterday. So she actually said two days ago that there were going to be Pokemon Legends previews this week. John Cartwright from Nintendo Life responds and says, I would be surprised given no one in the media has touched Pokemon Legends Arceus yet, the game yet. Samus Hunter responds, and goes, I was referring to other articles published by many other sites, of which these articles don't exist. And also, since you work under Nintendo Life, you are under an embargo, right? So until they lift the NDA for preview, you can't talk about the game. And you can't even say that you're working on it, right? So this is like Samus Hunter being like, oh, I was talking about other websites that never said this. Oh, and by the way, ha, huh, you'd be stuck under NDA. You can't talk about this anyway, so you don't matter. Basically trying to outright dismiss John Cartwright's credentials and say, ha, ha, got you because you're playing it and you can't talk about it. He goes on to say, there can't be an embargo until there's a preview. <laughs> John, John is not holding back. I mean, he's not trying to be mean. It's just so blatantly obvious in this instance that Samus Hunter pulled shit out of her ass. And obviously with this call out, with this coming from an actual person in the media who knows 
Pokemon Legends Arceus has not been sent out to any outlets yet. There can't be preview content because of that. There are no embargoes because there's nothing to embargo at this point. It's insane to see Samus Hunter called out in this way to me. I actually find this to be quite humorous. Um, it's pretty rare that a fake insider gets called out this bad. Because to this point, everyone that called out Samus Hunter were basing it on what other insiders have said or of criticism of things she's gotten wrong. We've rarely had somebody with direct knowledge of a situation be able to just literally look at Samus Hunter directly and go, you're full of shit, without saying the words, being a little kinder about it. So yeah, credit to John Cartwright for that. Thank you so much for discrediting Samus Hunter. I do appreciate that. Makes my job easier. Obviously, I will you know, take the blowback and take some responsibility for drawing attention to Samus Hunter in the first place, because I'm pretty sure I was the first youtuber to even mention samus hunter before she even had like 200 followers on twitter now she's got 18 thou plus so like i feel kind of bad because obviously me covering her as a potential rumor place has now led to thousands of people um maybe trusting her in a way that they shouldn't by the way i'm not saying that samus hunter doesn't sometimes post correct information all the things that she's gotten correct in the past are still true it's just very obvious now at this point she's making shit up Maybe some of the stuff she's getting from other leakers. Maybe she does know someone at Nintendo of Europe's Twitter. But some of the things she's talking about wouldn't be related to, like, Twitter campaigns. Like, as an example, she put up there a list of, here's all the Amiibo coming out in the next year. And some of that is just easily researchable stuff you can find on your own. Not really a leak. Um, but beyond that, a lot of it's just guesswork and, and presumption. So, uh, yeah. Let's just say this is the end of Samus Hunter. May you rest in peace. Now, I wanted to make sure we didn't end our show today uh, just talking about that whole situation. I know it's kind of been a big deal, so um, I, I want to make sure that we talked about something that is more fun and maybe more tangible. So Nintendo, a few days ago, put out a tweet featuring a Splatoon 3 animation talking about 2022. And you might go, who really cares? Is this ringing in the new year? Well, Nintendo had a tweet right after that with Mario 2022 ringing in the new year. So why did they have to have the Splatoon 3 animation happen? That's because this is the very beginning of the 2022 marketing campaign for Splatoon 3. Nintendo is starting it now. So from now through Whenever the game's going to come out, June, July, maybe it's coming out in March, we don't really know. Whenever the game's coming out, it's going to be having lots of tweets like this and lots of trailers and other things popping off, commercials and all that. So as we get closer and closer when the game comes out, yeah, and the fact they're starting the marketing campaign now kind of lets you know it's coming in the first half of this year, of the calendar year. So I find that to be really exciting, and that's obviously noteworthy in that of itself, is that this kind of pseudo, you know, and a roundabout way confirms first half of this year. But what I will say is... I also find it interesting because if you're going to do a Splatoon 3 small little tease like that in the first place to kick off 2022, then to me that means a Nintendo Direct can't be that far away, can it? Now we talked in the past, so it's very obvious there'll be a Nintendo Direct sometime in the next five to six weeks because there's like almost always a Direct in the first five to six weeks of, you know, a new year, 2020 notwithstanding. And I think there's like one other year you can look at where they didn't do one until like April. But still, uh, I do think it's very obvious we're getting a Direct sometime soon. I presume it's going to be in February because Pokemon Legends Arceus, but maybe it's going to be in January because Nintendo doesn't think it's going to matter. Pokemon Legends Arceus might just sell like gangbusters anyways, and a Direct isn't going to overshadow that, even if, you know, some major new games announced in it. I don't think they think it's going to affect Pokemon. There's been lots of major new games announced right after Pokemon once happened. You know, you'll have the Pokemon announcements and then E3 hits and then they announce big games there and it doesn't seem to impact Pokemon. So yeah, I, it could be one of those situations where Nintendo isn't worried about Pokemon. Uh, but still, um, yeah, I think this is clearly a tease of the game's coming first half. Clearly a tease of Direct is coming soon. We'll just have to wait and see. It's obviously some speculation, but I'm pretty excited about that. Anyways, folks, that is today's video. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, be sure to come on our podcast tonight. It's live at 8 p.m. Central Time uh, featuring me, Eric, and Xeon from uh, Nintendo Life, not Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century. Kind of interesting on that one there. Remember like how like on that old show, if you watched it back on like, was it the Disney Channel, that old movie that like the idea of video chatting friends on like a mobile device was considered like, oh my God, next gen technology. And then like, here we are and we're, we're doing it. We've been doing it for quite some time, actually. Kind of neat. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Robojazz from Nintendo Prime and I'll catch you in the next video.